welcome to Easy, Easy Big Takes, Takes, the podcast, where we read you the one-star reviews of your favorite movies and more. My name's Kat. And I'm Riley. And this week, I forgot our theme. Uh, you described it one week because we, we were talking about Cat in the Hat. Mm-hmm. It was just like weird, weird movies from our childhood. Yeah. Every adult hated, <laughs> but mm-hmm. kids who watched it back then love it now. I, I think it still holds up, both of them. Yeah. Our parents hate it. Our parents <laughs> hated both of these movies. But go ahead. The one I'm doing today is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory from 2005. This is rated PG. It's an hour and 55 minutes long. So it's on the longer side of a kid's movie. I saw that when I was like going to watch it and I was like, I don't remember this movie being that fucking long. I don't either. That kind of surprised me a little bit, but I mean, they wouldn't dare do that now. No. They are strict hour 30 nowadays. Yeah. This one didn't feel that long. So I think that's in their favor. I think the pacing's so good. I think it just works. Yeah. So go ahead and read the plot if you haven't seen it. Charlie Bucket is a kind and loving boy who lives in poverty with his family near the Wonka factory. The company's owner, Willy Wonka, has long closed his factory to the public due to problems concerning industrial espionage, which also caused all his employees, including Charlie's grandpa, Joe, to lose their jobs. Charlie's father, meanwhile, has more recently been laid off from his own job at a toothpaste factory, although he does not admit this to Charlie. One day, Wonka announces a contest in which Golden Ticket Tickets have been placed in five ran- random Wonka bars worldwide, and the winners will receive a full tour of the factory as well as a lifetime supply of chocolate, while one will receive an additional prize at the end of the tour. Wonka sales subs- subsequently skyrocket, and the first four tickets are found by the gluttonous Augustus Gloop, the spoiled Ver. Ver. What is her name? Veruca? Veruca Salt. Veruca Salt, the arrogant Violet Beauregard, and the ill-tempered Mike TV. <laughs> Charlie tries twice to find a ticket, but both bars come up empty. After overhearing that the final ticket was found in Russia, Charlie finds a banknote and purchases a third Wonka bar. The Russian ticket is revealed to be a forgery just as Charlie discovers the real ticket inside the wrapper. He receives monetary offers for the ticket, but the cashier warns him not to trade it regardless. Charlie runs back home. At home, Charlie initially wants to trade the ticket for money, for his family's betterment. But after a pep talk from Grandpa George, he decides to keep it and brings Grandpa Joe to accompany him on the tour. I used to be so anxious when he, like, finds a ticket. I thought people were going to take it away from him. Mm -hmm. I always got so anxious during that scene. I was like, run. (laughs) What if they change it this time? Exactly. I was like, (laughs) it's like last week with Ken and I have, like, what if mom does come home with so messy? (laughs) It's the same thing with this one. I was like, what if someone does take it away from him? (laughs) Charlie. Charlie and the other ticket holders are greeted outside the factory by Wonka, who then leads them into the facility. Individual character flaws cause the other four children to give in to temptation, resulting in their elimination from the tour, while Wonka's new employees, the Oompa Loompas, sing a song for a morality after each. Meanwhile, Wonka reminisces on his troubled past and how his dentist father, Wilbur, strictly forbade him from consuming any candy. After sneaking a piece of candy, Wonka instantly became hooked and ran away from home to follow his dreams. When he returned, <laughs> however, both his father and their house were gone. Both in the house. <laughs> the fucking house disappeared. Takes the cutie bottom. <laughs> and pushed it somewhere else. <laughs> After the tour, the four eliminated children leave the factory with exaggerated characteristic or deformity related to their elimination, while Charlie learns that Wonka, now approaching retirement, intended to find a worthy heir. Since Charlie was the least ill-behaved of the five, Wonka invites Charlie to come live and work in the factory with him, provided that he leave his family behind. Charlie declines, as his family is the most important thing in his life. As Charlie and his family's life improve, Wonka becomes despondent, causing his company and sales to decline. He eventually turns to Charlie for advice, and he decides to help Wonka reconcile with his strange father, Wilbur. During the reunion, Charlie notes his newspaper clippings on Wonka's success, which Wilbur collected, while Wonka realizes the value of family as he and Wilbur finally reconcile. Afterwards, Wonka allows Charlie and his family to move into the factory together. And you, you're just happy to be here, aren't you? <laughs> He's so good. <laughs> the director of this film is Tim Burton. Writers are Roald Dahl, he wrote the book, and John August, he wrote the screenplay. Roald Dahl's written a lot of my favorite books that got turned into movies from childhood. Or I guess only two. Matilda, I think, is the only other one. Yeah, someone mentions that later. Our cast, Johnny Depp plays Willy Wonka. Freddie Highmore plays Charlie Bucket. He's Norman Bates in the show Bates Motel. He is, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> He's a meme right now from The Good Doctor. Oh, 
Yeah, someone showed it to me, and I was like, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah, I haven't even heard of that. It's funny that it's happening at the same time, but uh, he's really good in this movie. Yeah, also, I think one of his first film roles was with Johnny Depp when he was really little. He was in Finding Neverland about the guy who wrote Peter Pan. Yeah. That's cute. I always forget that they'd, they'd been in stuff before. I've never seen that. It's such a sweet movie. Yeah, people kept mentioning that, and it's really cute. David Kelly plays Grandpa Joe. Helena Bonham Carter plays Mrs. Bucket. <whistles> yeah. <laughs> she deserves so much better than Tim Burton. Yeah, well, they're not together anymore. Yeah, but I'm I'm glad they're not together anymore. Mm-hmm. Noah Taylor plays Mr. Bucket. Missy Pyle plays Miss Beauregard. James Fox plays Mr. Salt. Deep Boy plays Oompa Loompa. And I didn't know this, and I'll get into it later. He plays all of them. I didn't know that. And everyone talked about yeah. it. Like, they all knew that. And I was like, why did why was I left out of the conversation? <laughs> this was one of those movies I watched every special feature for. Yeah. So that's why I do that. Also, they all look identical. Dude, I didn't think that hard about it. <laughs> <laughs> But they like showed him literally going to each like when those those big ensemble dance numbers with all of them, mm -hmm. him standing at each point and doing the dance from all of the like not all of the points from but like most of the points. He did a lot of work. Oh, he did, and I have a fun fact about it, and I want to talk a little shit about it because like for how much he was paid, it's fucked up. Yeah, it is a little bit. I figured, because, like, the amount of work he was doing... It wasn't enough. And we'll get there, we'll get there. Yeah. But Deep Boy plays Oompa Loompa, so all of them. They did all look alike, didn't they? Why was, yep. why was I so stupid? Why did I think it was all <laughs> different people? <laughs> he just has a lot of twins. <laughs> I didn't know, man. I didn't, I didn't, I don't know. Christopher Lee plays Dr. Wonka, and he's really good in it. Summer Isle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Adam Godley plays Mr. TV. Francica Trogner plays Mrs. Gloop. Anna Sophia Ra plays Violet Bogard. Julia Winter plays Veruca Salt. Jordan Fry plays Mike TV. And Philip Weigratz plays Augustus Gloop. The tagline was, Oompa Loompas are crazy for cocoa beans. I, I guess it's a play on Cocoa Puffs. That was such a huge thing as a kid. Like every other commercial. Of all the advertisements that installed in my brain, of all the TV commercials I saw, Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs was the ad during our childhood, in my opinion. That one and the rivalry between Apple and Cinnamon and the Apple Jacks commercials. They had a story. Same with the goldfish. Yeah, they had like a continuing storyline with them being under the bed. Yeah, yeah. And they would get lost out in the rest of the house, so they had to go get them. It was a ripoff of Toy Story, but still. I enjoyed it. I was invested. <laughs> and Pop-Tarts. That was the other one. Pop-Tarts. Yeah. I always felt bad for them. They always got eaten. Yeah, they're trying to have a good time. <laughs> trying to live. <laughs> trying to survive. <laughs> So I got some trivia. The 40 squirrels were trained for the scene where they pounce upon Veruca Salt in the nutshelling room. That's something they always told us. That was the first fact to say, like, those squirrels are real. Yeah. It is 2005, so, like, trying to CGI that shit would look terrible. But, like, that is so much work. It is. This next one is the fucked up thing I was talking about with Deep Roy. Mm -hmm. To his surprise, Deep Roy played every Oompa Loompa, repeating the same movements several hundred times. While these were then put together digitally, each Oompa Loompa represents a separate performance by Roy. In recognition of this, Roy's salary was raised to $1 million. How much money did this movie make? Oh, uh, so I... Couldn't tell you that, but I know how much Johnny Depp made, which was $18 million, just from one performance. He's in the movie the whole fucking time. He's playing multiple characters. A million dollars seems kind of short, in my opinion. Yeah, and I'm sure that this movie made in the hundreds of millions. Oh, yeah, this movie didn't. It was not a box office sale, I don't think. It made roughly $475 million at the box office. You couldn't give that guy $2 million? Get him in the tens. Yeah, like, come on. The Oompa Loompas and their songs make this fucking movie yeah i don't understand yeah nestle provided 1850 bars of real chocolate i'm gonna say it doesn't sound like a lot <laughs> compared to the chocolate we saw in the movie <laughs> but a lot of that cgi yeah here's five chocolate bars <laughs> here's five chocolate bars for the movie make it work yeah, exactly <laughs> it's like okay <laughs> it was probably for like the opening scene and like all the ones that were were opened by people and taken bites out of and like charlie yeah that actually makes a lot of sense yeah <laughs> i was thinking the factory chocolate i was like that could have not made the whole pond in the <laughs> that palace in the beginning <laughs> i'm like no way could that make the palace <laughs> anyway Johnny Depp was so impressed with Freddie Highmore's performance in Finding Neverland that he recommended Tim Burton observe him for the role of Charlie Bucket. Oh, that's even cuter. Yeah. 
Roald Dahl was well known when he was alive for hating greedy children, spoiled children, ignorant children, and televisions. <laughs> wow, I wonder what he's going to do with these characters. <laughs> this provided him with the basics of Augustus, Ferocia, what's her name? Veruca. Veruca, Violet, and Mike. <laughs> Anna Sophia Rob says she received a lot of jaw cramps while chewing her gum. We're gonna, we're not gonna, we're not gonna stop a second on him having a whole specific types of children he fucking hates. Someone specifically said he hated children who chewed gum. He hated kids who chewed gum for some reason. I mean, it is gross. I kind of get it, but not enough to like write a fucking manifesto. <laughs> That's what this is. Yeah. About the horrible almost deaths these children deserved. Like... It is a fantasy about children dying. <laughs> It's weird. <laughs> the concept of this, for everyone who said, like, this movie's weird and creepy and blah, 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 I'm like, this is, I mean, it's basing on the original book. Y'all are just upset Tim Byrne made it cloudy outside. <laughs> like, I, I don't know what else to tell you. Yeah. It's, he's doing the same shit as, like, the original movie in the book. Yeah, it's the same exact stuff. It's just, like, Gene Wilder as Willy Wonka was, like, very... Dry. He seemed a lot more level-headed. Like, he he's like, I'm fucking done making candy for you people. <laughs> I'm fucking done. <laughs> Johnny Depp's Willy Wonka was like, he found a gray hair and he was like, oh, I'm going to die one day. So I need to find somebody to take over. He still enjoyed his job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So uh, with the next one, Anna Sophia Robb says she received a lot of jaw cramps while chewing her gum. Her dad also told her not to smack her gum, but the filmmakers told her otherwise. <laughs> Quite a lot of the chocolate things, such as trees, flowers, etc. feature in the movie, were created by chocolate shop Chalky Walkie Duda in Brighton, England. I can't believe that was real. I can't believe I said that out loud. Chalky Walkie Duda. <laughs> it's like the most British sounding chocolate place you could ever fucking think of. <laughs> the shop displayed and sold some of the creations after the release of the movie. No offense to the people who own that's this chocolate shop, but that's the stupidest fucking name I've ever heard. It's so stupid. It's life. so stupid. I understand why you named it that. Chalky walkie doodle. You gotta. Like, it's that is the most British thing I've ever heard. Yeah, I saw that, like, I was reading that a second ago, <laughs> and before you even got to, like, England, I was like, I, that, yeah. This, that's the fact. There's no way it's not British. There's, like <laughs> That's a fact. There's a place called Chalky Walky Duda. <laughs> that's a fact. In Brighton, England. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Check it out. <sighs> During production, Gene Wilder, in an interview with the Daily Telegraph, accused the filmmakers of simply remaking Willy Wonka the Chocolate Factory for the purpose of money. Johnny Depp defended this movie, saying it was not a remake of the earlier movie, but a new adaptation of the book, which I agree with. I mean, they're trying to make money anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Gene, <laughs> come, come on. on. I like it better, Gene. I do. I'm sorry. I just do. Nothing wrong with the original, although I, d I would not want to watch the original. I really don't. I have What is it? There's nothing wrong with the original, <laughs> but... Oh, yeah. I forgot to say this. I don't have this one written down, but in the original movie, whoever the fuck played Grandpa Joe in that one has a coke nail. <laughs> you can visibly see it when he puts his hands on Charlie. You just see the fucking... On his pinky. Fucking... I just love the 70s. Oh, God. <laughs> So if you want a little Easter egg, go look for that. Yeah, find the, the hidden coke nail. They said this movie's dark. Come on. <laughs> go watch the original. The other Willy Wonka was so angry. He, I feel he like scared it... me a little bit. He yelled. Also, other thing, you don't see the kids come out of the factory at the end. It's implied they got murdered. You get to see the ones walk out of the factory in this one. Are they a little messed up? Sure. But they're alive. <laughs> All that's dark in this one is the lighting outside is dark. Yeah. No, seriously. <laughs> Johnny Depp stated that he had based his appearance on the costumes of Marilyn Manson's album, The Golden Age of Grotesque. Okay, I can see it. Yeah. Pale Bob. Bob, yeah. the page boy haircut. <laughs> Screenwriter John August had never... August. August, oh. Augustus Gloop. Augustus Gloop. <laughs> Screenwriter John August had never even seen Willy Wonka at the Chocolate Factory when asked by Tim Burton to write the script. After finishing the screenplay, he finally watched the 1971 version, only to be surprised of how much darker the family movie was compared to his own. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Again, I'm pretty sure the children got murdered in that one. And you see Charlie and the grandpa almost get beheaded by a fan in the original. Because they wanted to, like, what, eat bubbles or something? I don't know. It was a bubbly soda. That made them float. Yeah. Liz Smith, who played Grandma Georgina, stated in an interview on AskMen.com that she read the scripts for both of the grandmothers and picked the one that got to kiss Johnny Depp. And in quotes, and it was lovely, she recalled. That's so cute. Yeah, I thought that was a cute one. It's an old lady thing to do. Yeah. 
Dr. Wonka tells young Willy that some people are allergic to chocolate to discourage him from eating any candy. As a child, Johnny Depp was allergic to chocolate. <laughs> Well, my mom used to tell people I was allergic to sugar when I was a child. So they wanted to give you sugar. Because I had undiagnosed ADHD and I would be a nightmare when I had candy. I read this somewhere. I don't know if it's true or not, but they say sugar rushes are uh, not real or something or like it's a myth. I don't know. I, don't, I haven't looked into um, it, but like people on... And I'll, I'll clarify this. People on Reddit <laughs> said this wasn't real. Oh, the scientists, the scientists on, Reddit. on Reddit said it's not real. To counter that, I have this quickly. This is my family's like favorite story to tell about me. But I was unsupervised one Halloween at my grandma's house, and I had the, a candy bowl. You know, we were supposed to be handing out candy, but I got left alone and was just <laughs> fucking eating candy. Yes. By the end of the night, I was running up and down her hallway with my arms above my head, screaming, <laughs> like shrieking, nonstop, screaming while running back and forth i think sugar rushes might be real i think so too because like i remember when i had them as a kid i remember when i would babysit kids not to let them have sugar because mm -hmm. guess what would happen i have a sugar rush that has to be bullshit because i've had sugar rushes like it, it can't be not a thing no no anyway that was an interesting thing i'm not saying it's true or not i just i just remember reading that going like that that can't be you can't be telling the truth i think you made that up one person made that up and other people ran with it because it fit their truth yeah that's the internet that's a lot that's just the <laughs> internet exactly yeah anyway <laughs> The book sequel, Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator, has never been made into a movie. Roald Dahl denied the rights after his profound disappointment with Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, the 1971 version. Tim Burton has also expressed no interest in adapting the sequel. I don't care what happens after, you know? I don't care either. I mean, well, what, what else could happen? <laughs> I mean, I know they're making the Timothy Chalamet one. I forgot about that. I forgot about that too, and I'm gonna be honest. I don't care. This is probably gonna be this generation's Willy Wonka, so. Isn't it like just called Wonka or something? Yeah, something like that. It's like Folly Wonka's story or something. Oh. I don't care. I really don't. I don't. I don't think I needed a prequel. This movie gave me enough of a prequel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it gave enough backstory. Oh, this one's kind of sad. In early 2003, Gregory Peck was offered the role of Grandpa Joe. He told Warner Bros. he would consider it, but he passed away before he could give him an answer. Peck's family has said in interviews that he only hesitated because he didn't want to seem desperate and take a big pay cut, and that he was really looking forward to playing Grandpa Joe. Mm. I don't know, that would make me sad. During pre-production, director Tim Burton visited R R Roald Dahl's former house in the Buckinghamshire village of Great Miss... Missenden. Lissy Dahl remembers Byrne entering Dahl's feigned riding shed and saying, this is the bucket house, and thinking to, <laughs> to herself, thank God somebody gets it. Lissy showed Byrne the original handwritten manuscripts, which Byrne discovered were more politically incorrect than the published book. The manuscripts include a child named Herpes after the sexually transmitted disease. Jesus Christ. That makes him, like, hating children, like, worse. I know. <laughs> This is the, my favorite one. This is the last one. Johnny Depp once stated in an interview that he based his Willy Wonka performance on how he imagined former U.S. President George W. Bush would act like stoned. <laughs> I could see it. That's accurate. I could see it, too. I could definitely see it, too. Yeah. So let's talk about what we think of this movie. You go first. Okay. This just popped into my head. Like, I literally just had this realization. I have never questioned why Willy Wonka, as a character in this movie, did not have a British accent. I have never questioned that either until you just said it now. His dad is... Was his dad? Yeah. He's British. Yeah. Charlie's British. All the other characters are British. I think it just adds to his quirky character, honestly. <laughs> of course, he doesn't have an English accent. <laughs> Yeah, of, of course. course. One thing that I noticed this time that I think I've like mentally noted but never really thought hard on is like, and I understand for like the purposes of like story, but like the implications in the the world of this movie, those chalk the the golden tickets were only sent to Western countries. Well, they said worldwide. So someone mentioned this. It was sent wor worldwide, but you know only white kids were picked. He was fucking placing them shits. I'm sure he knew where it was going. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. They just happened happened to only go to. West western countries exactly well you know the fact about tim Byrne. he was once asked oh why don't you have people of color in your movies and he he said they don't fit within my aesthetic i watched it a lot as a kid it's another one where i'm like this kind of sh shaped me as a human being as well in like my sense of humor and like <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> We literally spent like 10 minutes like two weeks ago dying <laughs> laughing over mumbler <laughs> Have you ever heard of someone has a great letterbox comment that I included in this about that. 
<laughs> yes. Uh, Willy Wonka is iconic. Johnny Depp's version of him. There's nothing like it. It's so good. I didn't like the grandpa in either movie. He just seems like selfish. So you just did nothing all those years? I get it. He might have been sad. Your legs worked this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get a job? <laughs> you could Your legs couldn't work till you heard you were going back to the Wonka factory. Is that really all? <laughs> so in the beginning of the movie, I'm like, he's way, especially in this one, way too pushy about just making this happen like even charlie's like i'm a, if it doesn't happen it's whatever and he's like go buy more chocolate <laughs> go buy more chocolate it's not a go buy more chocolate it is i could see how it's made for selfish reasons because it's I, I in my head i was like oh no he's trying to encourage charlie to follow his dreams i'm like no he's actually kind of doing it for himself actually i actually kind of see it now he's doing it for himself yeah the other thing, I don't understand why they they pulled a Dr. Wonka and moved their house into the factory. The big fucking salt shaker said spray <laughs> of snow. <laughs> snow. <laughs> it's like they didn't want to leave the shitty situation they were in. Let him give you a nicer place to sleep. These fuckers are still sharing a bed. Yeah, no kidding. Like, <laughs> like, come on, like... Can you not give them their own beds? I think they're just, they're like, no, I don't want to be alone. I can't sleep without everybody. I can't sleep without everyone. It's how we keep warm. It's like one of those things where, like, I understand they want to show, like, how humble the family is, but it's like, I mean, come on. You know, we're just like everybody else. We moved our tiny cottage into a giant factory. Her house that's, like, slanted 90 degrees <laughs> to, like... Not structurally not sound. Structurally would not pass sound. an inspection. Uh, uh, the door, the door is literally like this. It's so fucked up. It's <laughs> the house was on verge to collapse. Oh, jeez. I could not tell whose parents were who. At one point in the beginning, one of the grandpas, the mean grandpa, makes like a comment about like, I'll be better than eating cabbage or something like that. And he's like, dad, come on. So like, I think those are his parents, but I can't tell. Yeah, it's kind of, they don't make it clear because I don't know who Grandpa Joe's. I don't know who. We're not even related to these guys. Is he? <laughs> is he? Like, or is he, just an old, is he just an old man they picked up on the street? <laughs> And they just call Grandpa Joe. <laughs> I guess Grandpa Joe is the mom's dad. I don't know. I have no clue either. I have no idea. They don't put an importance on it. My favorite thing is like, after they go through the whole factory and they come back, it shows Grandpa Joe like raking the yard or something. I'm like, yeah, he can't fake it again. He can't fake it twice. <laughs> he can't, yeah. he can't, no, no, no. <laughs> can't get away with that again, old man. No, you can do it. <laughs> go out there. You stood for like four hours. <laughs> There was no chairs in there. You didn't have to sit no. down. You were fine. You didn't sit down once. You can rake the yard. Yeah. <laughs> you can't pick it twice, dude. <laughs> but the other thing, well, two other things. One, I love Helena Bonham Carter so much. She's amazing. It's not possible for her to be in, in the movie more, but I would have been fine with it. The other thing was my sister and some of our family friends and I would spend a lot of time watching the portion of the special features on the DVD where they teach you how to do all the dances from the I movie that. that the Oompa do. So I spent a lot of my childhood was learning the Oompa Loompa dances. <laughs> I remember the songs were good. I like the songs. They're good. The, my favorite one's the Mike TV one. Uh, the fucking Player of the Apes, or not Player of the Apes, what is it called? The Space Odyssey. Space Odyssey, yeah. The only other thing I would have to say is there will never be a day that I pick the original over this one. Same. I don't think I saw the original until after I saw this one. We were like seven, six or seven when this first came out. We were young. I remember going to see it in theaters. My dad was taking me. He was super excited because he loved the original. He walked out. He was talking to mama about how much he hated it. <laughs> I was like, I thought it was good. <laughs> it was great. Whoever grew up watching the original one and likes it is going to hate this one. There is a generational divide with these two movies. Yeah. I don't hate the original, but I would not, I, I mean, I would not sit down and watch it again. I don't care to. A whole thing with like kids movies from the 70s that I, I looked up like a list just to get like a feel of what, what ones I'm thinking about. But like a lot of them are fucking melancholy and the original Willy Wonka was like so melancholy the Aristocats Robin Hood those movies are like kind of melancholy oh yeah and they're from the 70s I love I love Robin Hood though that's such a good movie yeah but I understand what you're saying but what did you think <laughs> uh I really liked this movie growing up I thought it was really fucking funny mm-hmm 
of all the Tim Burton movies, or like he quote unquote directed or anything, like this actually has to be one of my like favorites that he's done. Mm -hmm. It's the least depressing movie he's made. It is the least depressing, and I don't know. Like I, I guess I just like his like his live action movies a little bit more. I'm not the biggest Tim Burton fan out there. Not that I dislike his movies, but it's just like they're they've never been my thing. Like my an overarching like oh I love them compared to other things yeah the only other movie that has his name attached to it that is up there for me corpse bride is the only one i love mm -hmm. okay i do like sweetie todd okay sweetie todd is up there sweetie todd is actually really good and i don't like musicals but that's a good one mm -hmm. i remember showing that to you and i was so excited when you liked it i was like i don't know if i'm gonna like it i don't like musicals and i'm not the biggest fan of tim burton but it was that is a good movie that is actually a good movie well to be fair it sounds like you're a bigger fan than you thought i guess i <laughs> Because I like all those movies. <laughs> They're not my favorite movies, but I've watched them and liked them. Yeah. I guess I am more of a fan than I thought. I guess I, yeah, I've got three that I really like that I would actually rewatch. I have no problem criticizing him, though. No problem. Exactly. I'll drag his name exactly, through the mud. Yeah. I do not care. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I'm team Helena. Okay? Hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> Try to think. What is it? My mom always makes <laughs> makes the reference of the all the grandparents sitting in the same bed together. Like, yes. this is so funny. Yeah, when you when you as a whole family would lay in bed and watch movies together. Yeah, we all just sit there. <laughs> what else? Okay, if you chew gum and you said it tastes like roast beef at some point, that's nasty. I'd spit it spit out. It out. Spit that's it nasty. Out. It, you chew gum and it tastes like mashed potatoes at some point. Mm -mm, that is nasty. And. All of the kids, it's strictly right after he's like, don't, <laughs> like, please don't do that. Yeah, yeah, barely, barely audibly. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> well, like, with the, specifically with the bubblegum one, he's like, you don't want to do that. You want to, you should spit it out. You should spit that out. You should stop chewing that. <laughs> one last thing I just thought of that kills me every time. Willy Wonka mimicking Veruca's dad as he's like, sorry, I can't, I can't get you. Like, yes. It's so funny fucking funny that's gemini energy 100 percent. yes absolutely absolutely i think johnny depp's of gemini if i'm not mistaken he is his birthday's a day after mine <gasps> do not okay yeah makes sense it makes sense. he's really uh he's full gemini this <laughs> gemini Gem yeah gemini all right i'm gonna move on to the critic reviews this first one is a positive one it's by michael compton remakes can be a tricky thing but, but director tim Byrne hits a bullseye with charlie and the chocolate factory a delightful treat filled with stunning visuals and a lot of fun performances headlined by Johnny Depp. In his retelling of the Roll Doll novel, Depp plays the reclusive candy maker Willy Wonka. Charlie may well be the best looking film I've seen this year that's even more visually appealing than the superb work by Robert Rodriguez in Sin City. Byrne's direction is sharp and the movie is a feast for the eyes. With each scene, Byrne gives audience another piece of a unique world from the tilted house of the buckets to the many rooms the children discover inside the chocolate factory. There are still five months left in 2005, but I'd be surprised if I see a movie more deserving of Oscars for visual effects and art direction. While the look of the film is the heart of Charlie, Depp, and Highmore provide the movie with its soul. Depp has a lot of fun as Wonka. Some have suggested his performance mimics Michael Jackson. I cannot tell you how many times I read that sentence. People keep comparing him to Michael Jackson. I guess he was a whimsical guy, but like, I was not cognizant enough to put those two together. I never put it together, but like, I get what they're saying. But I think it is much more original than that. It's delightful, yet creepy, and a performance that may top his goofy work in parts in the Caribbean. Heimer is also very good, matching Depp's quirky performance with a sweet turn as Charlie. Charlie is sure to draw comparisons to the 1971 original starring Gene Wilder. As someone who openly vaguely remembers seeing the, that film, it's hard for me to compare it to the rem to this remake. I can compare Charlie to other 2005 releases, though, and it is clearly one of this year's most enjoyable. Can you believe, like, they said that thing about, uh, um, they can see it like getting an Oscar for like visual effects and like art direction. I can see that. It was like really, it looks really good for 2005. Mm -hmm. But I just gotta say, it's got some competition because Shark Boy and Lava Girl also came out. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Honestly, though, yeah. Oh, robots, too. Oh, wow. Goodness gracious. Busy year. Busy year for kids' movies. Mm -hmm. I think every year is. We were just watching these ones. This was a childhood. <laughs> yeah, literally. But yeah, just like see, thinking about it in comparison of like something like Sharkboy and Lava Girl and what the effects looked like in that movie compared to like how much this movie still holds up today, even in that realm. And has an aesthetic, you know. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that they mentioned that it's like hard for them to compare it to the original. Mm -hmm. Kind of similar to how you can't compare this one to the 
old one. It's hard for me to compare Johnny Depp's performances and other things because he's so different in everything. It's like they're not even. That's where the true talent is, you know. Because last week we were talking about Mike Myers and how he has like three voices. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Completely opposite with Johnny Depp. Yeah. The next one by Felix Vasquez. Believe it or not, I was hopeful for the remake of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. While I was never a fan of Tim Burton, I've always considered him overrated. I was hoping Burton's take on the story would be entertaining and very amusing, but alas, Burton botches yet another remake. For those who may not remember, Burton completely botched the remake of Planet of the Apes, which went from a thought-provoking allegory about society to a dumbed-down teen science fiction film. Now granted, I did give it a good review. It was based mostly on the cast and makeup. Mark Wahlberg's in that, <laughs> in the one he's talking about. Sure is. <laughs> Either way, don't believe the excuses of the hardcore Burn fanboys. This is a remake in every sense of the word, but Burn goes in the Hall of Fame of directors who just couldn't top the original masterpiece. Willy Wonka was a facet of my childhood, a film that never got old, a film that still is as enjoyable and entertaining as it was 15 years ago. With Burn's new predictably twisted and gothic remake, I won't be surprised if 10 years from now we'll even be remembering this Blair reproduction. What the original had over this was that it was menacing while being madcap and innocent. Burn is is insistent on making this production menacing beyond anything, while the original had fangs behind its smile. With the original film, we had each and every device in the factory declaring, it's beautiful but very menacing, while this version just says, it's menacing, without leaving anything to our imagination. And for a man who loves to use his imagination, he doesn't hesitate to give us the backstory to every single character. The original had us curious about Wonka, wondering who he was, where he came from, and if Wonka was even his real name, while Burn explains who Wonka is in a me meandering backstory that was highly predictable and trite. Wonka's father was an anal retentive dentist. Yes, thanks Tim. There are many scenes that made no s such sense whatsoever that are randomly thrown in for comedic effect, but really don't hold much of relevance. Byrne feels the need to draw out these nonsensical sequences rather than just explain it to us. There's the backstory for him. We get to see how the kids end up after their accidents, and there's an odd scene where Wonka builds a chocolate palace for a famous emperor. <laughs> Not to mention much of the dialogue is insanely clunky from Wonka's one-liners, which falls so flat. And Highmore's dialogue as the awe-inducing young boy who spots lines like, it doesn't have to have a point, that's why it's candy. What Wilder perfected was the utterly hilarious and sharp one-liners that he threw out to the other characters with such deadpan nonchalant bore toward the children's presences. Father had an insanity to him that made him look likable while having you pulling your kids to you. Father with his bright clothing and wild hair made us believe this was an eccentric man whose genius was his factory. Burton forces down our throat that his version of Wonka is insane by making it very obvious. Obvious. With pale skin, large teeth, and a high-pitched voice and weird laugh, Byrne tried too hard to remind us of Wonka's insanity. While to me there will only be one Willy Wonka, I just wanted to see Depp have fun with it. He chews the scenery, but it's hardly memorable. Wonka here looks a lot like a mixture of Marilyn Manson and Michael Jackson, with a feminine disposition and ridiculous gleam that really just makes him look like a pedophile more than a mad genius. Hmm, that seems homophobic. Uh, yeah. Byrne's depiction becomes less an adaptation and more a display of bravado for his own ego. Charlie is essentially stale. The original had a mu such magic and whimsy and wonder. This seems more cold and antiseptic purposely, while Byrne botches the Oompa Loompas. Boo Byrne. The original had dwarves as the Oompa Loompas singing songs of warning to the audience, while we have one actor, Deep Roy, multiplied into a million dwarves who sing some of the most forgettable, lavish music about each character that I was just groaning through. But Byrne seems to want to exercise that routine, make it also forgettable. I had high hopes for this depiction of the original film, and though some of the imagery was fun to look at, and Freddie Highmore gives a very good performance, Byrne botches another remake with predictability, twisted scenery, bland story, a horrible alteration of Wonka, an ending that's anything but pleasing. Scroll back up. I had I had points, but I, they just kept piling on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I didn't really find this one menacing. To me, this... Willy Wonka, his factory looked like a factory. And that was just part of it for me, that it looked, still looked like a factory, even with the fun colors. As they're going through it, you were taking a tour of a factory. Yeah, there'd be the fun chocolate room, but there would also be parts of it that looked like a fucking factory. I don't, I just don't understand. Like, I get, I guess it's because you're an adult when you, when they watch it the first time. Mm -hmm. But like, I liked that we were given a backstory about Wonka. I think this person just needs to reckon with the fact that it's a different version. This is a Wonka that, that's not this like elusive dude. Like he's, he's a person who has a backstory. I didn't think it was nonsensical. I didn't think that this version seemed scarier. I didn't find it 
in any of the ways that this person described it, but specifically with the backstory, it was like, I liked that we got to know who this guy is and the the weird chocolate palace part in the beginning and flashbacks to his childhood. Well, the chocolate palace sets up for like why this guy is so like such a big deal, done amazing things with candy that nobody else has done. People, it was so amazing. People tried to steal from him. If you want to explain his backstory, you still need to keep this level of like, why is this guy so cool? Why is he so great? But you can still explain how he's still just a person who had like shit happen to him. Mm -hmm. And Charlie's little asides are just hints to Wonka that he's like the kid to go with. It's like, I don't understand. Again, every review makes comparisons to the original. And while there are different things about it, clearly, of course, they are the same story. The same things happen in it. Yeah, the two Wonkas have different reasons. But it's still the same stuff. To say, like, this one's so much darker than the original one, when the original one clearly doesn't show that the kids leave the factory or are alive or are more yeah. than likely murdered. Gene Wilder screaming at you at the end of that movie? That's a pretty scary scene. I didn't like that scene. It made me scared. I don't like it when Gene Wilder's mad. <laughs> it's a TikTok audio. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty scary. I don't like it. Johnny Depp doesn't scream at anyone in this movie. No. I'm not scared He's of He's very hushed. He's very, yes, he is. Mumbler. Mumbler. <laughs> I just, I just, this person, it's, and we said this a million times, you clearly grew up with the original, so this one was absolutely not going to come up to your standards. It just wasn't. Yeah. My whole thing is, like, I don't really trust the opinion this opinion when you frame everything that's at the end of the day just a difference as a bad thing. Yeah, just the fact that it was different is bad. Yeah. Also, the songs are not forgettable at all. Oh. Well, I just love how he's like, I can't see this being memorable in 10 years. Dude, did you forget this is a kid's movie that kids are going to be seeing and be like, oh yeah, I grew up with this movie? The same that you did for the original? That's kind of funny that you say that. It's almost like you forget <laughs> just the arrogance of it is just kind of annoying. I get it, but like, you're writing a review. At least like, drop your bias. drop your feelings a little yeah. bit. Yeah, you're biased. This one just had a really just butthurt feeling about it. Also, who's reading the reviews? It's going to be parents who are taking their children to see it and then there's gonna be the like hand like the handful of people who don't have kids but watch the original that just want to know hey did the movie just interest them but like for the most part it's parents who are going to take their children to see it and they're like what am i getting into like at least mention that children like it yeah review by joe lozito two out of four stars Ignoring for a second, there was no need to remake 1971's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The notion of director Tim Burton bringing his unique imagination to the road doll story is intriguing, and for a while, Mr. Burton's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory recaptures some of that old Burton magic missing so long from his recent films. The art direction in Charlie is absolutely stunning. Wonka's factory is truly a wonder to behold, and even the scenes in Charlie's depilitated house are as good as anything from Ed Edward Scissorhands or Beetlejuice. Sadly, it may have been a better idea to have Mr. Burns' team simply illustrate Mr. Dahl's book rather than make a whole movie. Taking on the unevitable task of following in Gene Wilder's footsteps, Johnny Depp takes his first misstep in recent memory as Wonka after Mr. Depp turned the potentially throwaway film of Jack Sparrow into Pirates of the Caribbean into a full-on hoot. I was willing to give him the benefit of the doubt for the first half of the film, but his Wonka is simply one poor choice after another. With a page boy haircut, pale skin, and a voice that recalls Dustin Hoffman as Tootsie, Mr. Depp's Wonka exudes non none of the gravity required for the role. It's as though he didn't take the role seriously, rather than an intimidating candy man teaching brats a lesson. This Wonka is simply a freak. Uh, I don't know the Dustin Ho Hoffman Tootsie thing. It's Dustin Hoffman where he plays a woman. There's a lot of uh, underlying homophobic things going on with these reviews. Yeah. And these were, I'm, I'm not even kidding, the top ones. Yeah. Um, I just want, to me, he seems like a guy who like, he knows that he knows that he has to have some sort of happy persona. Even if he's like anxiety spiraling up in his brain, he's still like at least cordial and he knows he, has, he, knows he has to force a smile because he's putting a show on. I just, I never took that as like whatever they're fucking saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't understand where they're coming from. Yeah. It's a guy who makes candy for a living. <laughs> like what the fuck do you want? Yeah. Like, it's almost like they didn't have anything else negative to say, so they just kind of had to say something homophobic. Like, that's kind of what it sounds like. You need to get right with yourself first. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. I noticed that. I was like, God, two reviews, and they're both... That's both a critique of theirs. That's interesting. Hmm. 
uh, it is simultaneously unfair and unavoidable to compare Johnny Depp's performance with that of Gene Wilder. Occasionally, Mr. Byrne will focus on his star in a wordless moment, and there will be a hint of the performance that could have been. For some reason, though, Mr. Depp simply turns Wonka into a goofball. While Mr. Wilder's Wonka exists in his own world, Mr. Depp is far <laughs> from another planet, which makes it all the more odd when writer John August tries to humanize him with a tacked-on Freudian backstory about a do domineering dentist father played by C Christopher Lee. Though it is a joy to hear Mr. Lee say lollipop, why is it necessary <laughs> to make Wonka's motivation so clear? It's more interesting not to understand him completely. The only thing is that I think it just gives it all it's doing is giving the audience a different perspective yeah it's just telling the story in a different way i think tim burn saw the original was like i wish i did know more about this wonka mm -hmm. so you want to give him a backstory i don't think there's anything wrong with a backstory yeah it just it, he's just a mm. he's just a guy who like doesn't want to face the thing he's running away from dad and he's been running for so long and his hair got gray and he was like oh i'm gonna die one day i'm gonna die i gotta i gotta find somebody to take over so i can figure this stuff out <laughs> Exactly. I do agree he is from another planet, but again, not a negative. I like it's it. It's not a negative. That's, yeah. It's really funny. And I'm sorry. It's like almost like they're comparing Gene Wilder. Like he, you know, is eccentric, but Johnny Depp's character is one is weird. I'm like, you're you're both saying the same thing. Like exists in his own world and from a different planet are like the same thing. They're just mad at John Gene Wilder. They're mad that 80 year old Gene Wilder didn't get up there to make that movie. <laughs> and I think the important part about the the way that Wonka is in Depp's version of it is him and Charlie are supposed to be people that like do not fit in with the people around them. They see the world in a different way. Wonka's on a different planet, sure, but neither of them fit in and they have this kind of outsider bond thing, okay? That's it. Charlie understands him and we needed to see that there's some human in Wonka to understand why Charlie as a person would be able to understand him. Yeah, exactly. That's a great way to put it. Thank you just mad these people are making me think about this movie too hard <laughs> exactly yeah exactly just a little bit more from this person amazingly freddie highmore mr depp's co-star from finding neverland turns in the film's finest performance as charlie but he's shouting into the wind he exists in his own film i could kind of see what they're saying there but i don't think it's in a bad way yeah i don't i don't have anything to say more than like oh he was good i, I you know and yeah maybe that's not the the nicest thing to say because you would want as an actor you want more praise but i didn't think about their performances that hard i thought everything i thought everyone did good i thought everyone was very cohesive within the film i think the, the way that they're critiquing his character is literally how you're supposed to interpret his character like he's supposed to like kind of exist in his own thing like he he doesn't like literally what i just said like he does not fit in with the other people around him except for his like his family but like he is kind of existing in his own thing there's other stuff going around on he's like supposed to be that way i just didn't even think about that hard so i would have never like critiqued it that hard you know but exactly. like you do, you are making good points the fact that we are having to look into it further those very good points mr burr and mr august return to dow's original title but unfortunately update the sensibility the original chocolate factory existed in a more innocent time when parents could be dumbstruck by the mangling of their children by a mysterious recluse now watching augustus gloop sucked into a fudge maker or violet Barragard blown into a huge blueberry, perhaps the worst effect in the film. One wonders which parent will sue first, or if there will be one huge class action lawsuit against Wonka. At least we know, with the right lawyers, he'll probably be back making chocolate in no time. Mr. Dahl would have appreciated that. Well, I mean, a lot of time passed before Charlie moved into the factory. I think he's fine. Mm -hmm. and, and back to my point about him literally being like, do not do that, right before they all do something that they're not supposed to do. It's not really on him. He told them not to. <laughs> yeah however quiet it was at each moment <laughs> what, what did this person did this person want a boring ass fucking movie i don't know they would have been really mad if it was made this way which was a little bit different and they would have been really mad if it was a complete copy either way mm -hmm. this is our last critic one it's a positive one from rob's movie vault i'll bet there are many adults today who have queasy memories of 1971's Willy wonka the chocolate factory psychedelic yet moralistic the movie offered gene wilder wilder in his full passive aggressive effervescence adds a mysterious chocolatier willy wonka whose gentle demeanor cloaked what appeared to be a deep contempt for children his most loyal clientele it also had ghastly songs without this movie sammy davis jr wouldn't have inflicted the candy man on television 
telethon viewers year after year. Those obnoxious Oompa Loompas and Carlville but in different direction by Mel Stort. If anyone feels any sort of residual fondness for it, it's because uh, the malicious fantastic Road Doll in his original book Charlie and the Chocolate Factory devised such a ready-made fantasy concept. Five children invited to spend a day in the world's largest ch Chucky Emporium. <laughs> That's what he says, Chucky. Chucky walkie, chucky walkie, walkie, whatever the fuck it was chucky called. Chucky walkie doo -dah, something like that. Yeah, Chucky walkie doo -dah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Remakes generally depress me as much as they do anyone else, but Tim Burns' Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is poised to become a new cult classic to replace the old one. Burns understands this story in a way few other directors could, although Danny DeVito, who did a rascally job with Thal's Matilda, might also have had fun with this project. I love Danny DeVito. I love Matilda. No, I don't think he could have made Charlie the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> not, not how it is now. Can I offer you an egg? <laughs> I love that. He would he would play the Oompa Loompa. <laughs> <laughs> and I would love that. Uh, that's that school. <laughs> I would have loved that, honestly. That would have been great. This director constantly veers from mopiness to flamboyant glee, though Charlie's closer to the tone to his Beetlejuice than to his Edward Scissorhands. Once again, Byrne has Johnny Depp along for the ride, and though many have said that Depp has based his Willy Wonka on Michael Jackson, I suspect he's really playing the only person he ever plays in Tim Burton films, which is Tim Burton. This Wonka is a misfit who enjoys showing off his elaborately designed playpen, but isn't much phased by those who don't appreciate it. Instead of sappy Anthony Newley songs, this movie has Danny Elfman scoring the original lyrics from Doll's book. The Oompa Loompas are all played via digital replication by the diminutive Indian actor Deep Roy, whose unsmiling and uncut persona here is both refreshing and consistently funny. The sets are, of course, obvious sets, but they always are in Tim Burton's films. The nasty bits, claustrophobia, will, as ever, have a hard time with Augustus Gloop's fate, are softened by Burton's jaunty sense of artifice. Gene Wilder can criticize this remake all he wants. Burr and Depp have simply done it better. I have mixed feelings about a backstory added by scripter John August, in which the young Wonka's fascination with sweets is neatly tied to his forbidding dentist dad. It adds a little to the story except for a lane coda, in which Wonka, having learned the power of family, reunites with his dad. However, since the father is played by Christopher Lee, so going strong at 83, hammer bless him, I'll forgive it. This factory, genuinely beautiful and imaginative, is a movie that admires of the original factory, who haven't seen it since they were kids, carrying around in their heads. And it adds another lo lovable freak to the burned up gallery, perhaps the freakiest of all. Even without the Jacko undertones some viewers see in it, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is the most truly submersive entertainment for kids since, well, since Road Doll stopped writing. They really liked it. Yeah, I like that they mentioned the songs being better, and despite what Gene Wilder thinks, they did a great job. And I can appreciate that, because, like, I mean, he's literally mm -hmm. saying what the other two, the opposite of what the other two said. Yeah. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that another another adult watches. I was like, it, it's actually pretty good. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate what they had to say. Yeah. We can move on to the audience reviews. This first one is a 10 out of 10 from INDB, and I really <laughs> like this title. It goes, mmm, chocolate. It's written in 2009. This movie surprisingly has many comparisons to candy. It's sweet, delightful, and rich in taste. Johnny Depp also does a marvelous job as Willy Wonka himself. There's nothing that parents will have to worry about this movie. It'll make a fine and delicious treat that the whole family will devour over and over again. It's also better than the original, in my opinion. But Johnny Depp isn't the only big star in the movie. The movie itself wouldn't be as candy-coated as it is today without the performance of Freddie Highmore, August Rush, who plays Charlie Bucket. Trust me, when I say that you will be in for 115 minutes of pure and delightful fun, this is the one movie that even chocolate can't top. I forgot about August Rush. It was just like one of those offhand like drama for children. Oh yeah, okay. A Charlie St. Cloud type movie. I remember seeing that in theaters. I cried. I cried too. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how many like teen girls at that age went to go see that movie just because of Zac Afron and ended up just like crying their eyes out? It was just so mean of them to do that. <laughs> so mean to do. This next one's a 1 out of 10 from INDB titled, If you like the original, you more than likely won't like this one. 2005. I'm not much of an avid reader, so I never read the original book. <laughs> Thank you for the honesty. Hey, me too. <laughs> but I watched the original movie. I love the original movie, and this one seems like a sick, demented Tim Burton twist on the beloved original. I will never let my kids watch this. I don't see how anyone can say this is a family movie. To make the things worse, the Oompa Loopas were played by one ugly person. This is that one really rude one that I was telling you about earlier. Caught astray. Caught astray for no reason. They call him ugly. It's so mean. It's so mean. For no reason. Is that all you could say? You couldn't say his, his performance was bad? Because you can't say he's not talented. 
talented. He can't. He taught me how to dance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. This, this has to be one of the most sadistic movies that I've, <laughs> that I've seen to and put a twist on. I had a sneer on my face from the beginning to the very end. I forced myself to watch the entire movie. You may like it if you like the book, but if you never read the book and enjoy the original movie, this is not the movie for you. The kids literally are alive at the end, so I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. While in the original, there's no hint that they're still alive. No hint. Yeah. So 1 out of 10. You must be on drugs to like this crappy remake. I don't get the voting on this movie. Talk about stuffing the ballot box. Johnny Depp should be ashamed of himself, and so should Tim Burton. I don't think one thing good to say about this movie except when the credits rolled. I don't know who Depp was trying to be here, but it didn't work. The cross between his Ed Wood character and Michael Jackson, it seems but done really bad. Just because Tim Burton and Depp are involved doesn't mean it should be given a thumbs up. The Burton Depp groupies are definitely at work here with liking this turd. Hey Hollywood, do the world a favor and stop making remakes and comic book stories. How about the original idea? It would be nice. This guy has probably been in hell for the last 15 years because they literally been making remakes and comic book series. <laughs> Marvel. Oh, <laughs> this guy must be in yeah. hell. <laughs> oh, wait till they hear what they did to Star Wars. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm gonna go move on to Letterbox now. Yes. This first one is three stars. Mike TV definitely grew up to be a Twitch streamer. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did. Or like he grew up to end up working for like the government because he was too good with computers. They had to be like, no, nah, we cannot allow you to work out in the world. You need to work for <laughs> us. It's either Twitch or the highest level of the government. <laughs> a secret government. Mm -hmm. Four stars on Letterboxd. I do not trust people who don't like this movie. Which... I agree. All I have to do is ask, like, oh, did you see the original? Do you love the original? Oh, then you're gonna hate this movie for no reason. Check the original at the door, yeah. please. <laughs> yeah. This is four stars from Letterboxd. Willy Wonka made not one, but two cannibalism jokes in this movie. That's my favorite fucking joke from this it's movie. Great. It's hilarious. It's fantastic. I, too, am eatable. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the next one's four stars. That motherfucking Grandpa Joe watched his family star for years, knowing damn well his legs were <laughs> working fine. We hate Grandpa Joe. If I was the mom and dad, the minute I saw him get up and do a little jig, <laughs> whenever he was like, I'll go with Charlie to the factory, I would have been like, no, you can sit your ass down. I'm going. You could go look for a job tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, you can go look for either a new job or a new place to live tomorrow. Yeah, okay. <laughs> while you're out. <laughs> yeah, while you're out. Three stars from Letterbox. Okay, guess which one of these Im three improbable things is in this movie? One, cannibalism jokes. Two, a scene parodying 2001 <laughs> Space Odyssey. Three, racism. I lied, they're all in there. <laughs> <laughs> True. This one's five stars. Comfort movie that makes no sense of why it's my comfort movie, but it is. It is, though. This is a good movie I would put on as a kid and fall asleep to at night. This is definitely one of them. Oh, yeah. I never made it all the way through, but it's fine because I, my, the intention was not to make it all the way through. It was to put it on and fall asleep to it. I could fall asleep to this movie. I have. I've had daytime naps to this movie. Mm hmm Definitely. I'm loving this person's fucking profile picture. It's Patrick Bateman as Barbie. <laughs> I love it. This Barbie has some videotapes to return. <laughs> This next one with that profile picture uh, has four stars, and it says, Greatest Slasher of All Time. <laughs> it's a horror movie. Just put horror music in the background. It, it is a horror movie. It's literally the, the same with Cat in the Hat. Yeah, literally, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what we talked about last week, yeah. Like, it should be scary, but it's not. It's really, it's, it's really not, no. Mm-hmm. This is our last review. This is a 10 out of 10. Titled Magical. It was written in 2020. This movie was absolutely magical and incredible to me as a child. Recently rewatched it, and even as an adult now, this movie still dazzles me. Johnny Depp's quirky yet deeply complex portrayal of the character was still grounded enough to make many viewers mystified and intrigued by Willy Wonka's backstory. He knows how to balance a compelling and delightful performance with an edgy twist to his character that pushes boundaries in exactly the correct way to engage an audience. Wonderful acting from the children who seem to enjoy every second of being in the movie. I managed to authentic depict the characterization that I believed Roald Dahl intended to express through his book, as did the parents. Tim Burns' direction, as always, was excellent, and it's amazing that he was able to stay so true to the book while also adding his own spin onto the story. Thoroughly enjoyed the film and would, would recommend it for all ages. There you go. Simple as that. Yeah. Maybe we'll feel the way about Wonka that people from the 70s, who grew up with the 70s, one feel about this one, you know? Everyone turns into an asshole at some point. <laughs> Every yeah, generation. It's called, it's called getting old. It's called getting okay. old. You just, be yeah. you just become an asshole. <laughs> yeah. What would you rate this movie? I know we didn't rate Cat of the Hab, just now I'm remembering that. Like, we, we could. We, we could, literally couldn't. We couldn't 
we couldn't place it on a number scale. <laughs> that movie's beyond numbers. It really is. This one's kind of in that same realm, but like, I think it it's a little more grounded to Earth than than Doctor Seuss. Yeah, I would I would say like a, a ten out of ten. There's nothing wrong with this movie. <laughs> it's, I could watch it any day. I could. It's definitely a comfort movie. Like you can put it on, and I'll sit there and enjoy it. I'm gonna go with a seven out of ten just to ground it a little bit more for me. Like Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane. To my Citizen Kane. Yeah. Do you have anything else you want to add? No. <laughs> <laughs> but if you wanted to reach us or give us any feedback or suggestions for movies, you can reach us on our Instagram at Easy Big Takes. And we also have a TikTok at Easy Big Takes. We have a website with all of our transcripts and review overviews. That's EasyBigTakesPodcast.com. We also have a letterbox account where you can find our review overviews. And don't forget to share us, follow us wherever you listen, and leave a review or a rating because it helps us out a lot. And thank you so much for listening. My name is Kat. And I'm Riley. This has been Easy Bake Takes. Easy watching out there. Bye. Bye.